Hello everyone, this is George with the Paper Panda Crafts. I am back with another video. On this week's video, we are going to be making an amazing clipboard folder combo. If you'd like to learn how to make it, stay tuned. So, for this project, we are going to be using some doubled up chipboard, um, or if you have heavyweight chipboard, you can use that too. Um, but I just glued two pieces of medium weight chipboard together. Um, all the heavyweight chipboard that I've looked at um, has, like, one of them that I looked at just flat out said, This is two pieces of medium weight chipboard glued together. So, I just thought I can do that myself. So, anyway. Um, so yeah, we're using doubled up chipboard. Again, like I said, if you have heavyweight chipboard, you can use that too. So we're going to be using two pieces of 12 by 12 paper that I joined together down the center. Um, I use double stick tape for this. You can use glue. Um, just don't oversaturate your paper. But I found that just using a quarter inch uh, double sided tape works the best. Um, and then you'll need another piece for your liner, which I'm not sure of the dimensions just yet, but we will figure that out in a minute. So I will be trimming this piece down. Um, and all these papers are from the correspondence paper pad from Tim Holtz. Um, this is what the front of these two look like. So it's just really cool. It's got like airmail and different postal stuff. It's just really neat looking. So um, I thought it was really cool. So first thing we're going to need for this little uh, folder clipboard thing um, is, or the first thing we're going to do, I should say, <laughs> is we're going to stick down our doubled up chipboard. Now I've already got double sided tape on this. Um, again, you could probably get away with using glue. I just like to use the double sided tape just so I don't end up oversaturating uh, my paper and then it gets smushy. But I really don't think it'll be a problem with like a thicker cardstock like this. But if you're using thinner paper, you um, might want to be a little bit more careful and use double sided tape. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot to show you. Another thing you're going to need is obviously the clipboard clip. Now you can use something like this, um, or you can use uh, another type of clip, but I got these at Hobby Lobby. These are also from Tim Holtz, and I did glue a piece of chipboard to the back just to raise it up a little bit, because if it wasn't there, this comes down further than the back this right here comes down further than here and it wouldn't allow it to sit level so my glue wouldn't stick so I just um, used my E6000 and glued a piece of chipboard to the back to where it would sit up a little bit and then I just took some um, brads and stuck them in there just to fill the holes just so it'll make it look um, screwed in there we go so, and then whatever other decorations you want to use, um, I'm going to put these metal book corners on the corners, and I'm going to use some Tim Holtz embellishments. Um, I might not use all of these, but these are the ones that I liked that I had, and they're just different little correspondence mail things that kind of go with this paper so yeah all right so let's get started so first thing I'm going to peel the backing off of my tape and get that all peeled off and these chipboard pieces are nine by six if I forget any measurements, guys, I'm really sorry. I'm still new to this whole tutorial thing, so bear with me. Um, but if I forget something, leave me a comment and I will answer your questions. So, yes. So, 9x6, 
And then, like I said, these pieces of paper are each 12 by 12. We're not going to use this whole thing, so I will be trimming off some excess. But um, I like to start with this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay this piece down, probably giving myself about an inch uh, border to do a wraparound. And what's neat about this paper is that it's kind of got these grid lines design so it kind of helps you line your pieces up and just stick that down use your bone folder or I'm gonna use my we are memory keepers big spatula um, as soon as I saw posh paper lady using this I was just like oh my god I knew I should have picked it up at Tuesday morning went back to Tuesday morning they still had one and I snatched it up but this thing is great. <laughs> so thank you, Posh Paper Lady. So I'm gonna use this to get it all stuck down and do the same thing to this other piece. All right, so now the tricky part is you want to give yourself enough space because this is going to fold over. We're not going to be putting a spine in. So you want to give yourself about a little over a quarter of an inch of space. So that's about half an inch. That's a little much. I would say just about there and then lay it down and there we go and right here when you're doing your fold where this seam is you're gonna have to be really careful hopefully y'all can see that hopefully there's not too much of a shadow I'm sorry about my lighting guys but um, I'm doing the best with what I got <laughs> <laughs> so um, you're going to have to be really careful with this seam because it's going to be double thick. So it might have a tendency to crack on you, but just kind of be gentle with it and it, sh it should be okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and trim away our excess. And I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to... Yeah, we'll trim it about there. That should be enough. Get it lined up. All right, and we'll do the same thing on the top. Now we will do our miter cutting around our corners. Now you're going to want to leave a little bit extra space because you're using thicker chipboard. So just leave a little bit extra. Don't go crazy, but leave a little bit extra. And I'll probably cut that one a little wide, but that's okay. <laughs> That's what the little metal book corners are for. <laughs> See, that's another reason I really like using those metal book corners is because they help you find they help you hide your mistakes. <laughs> so go ahead and get your creases. Get everything started. And you can lay down some tape. Sorry, I'm trying to keep things as neat as possible, but sometimes I'm neat, sometimes I make a mess. And right in here, I like to kind of dip my tape down into that crevice and then lay the rest down here. Get my little ruler. 
And there we go. And I'm going to do this to all four sides, and I'll be right back. All right, I am back, and I have my tape laid down on all four of my sides. So now I'm going to go ahead and lift out, uh, off the backing. So we'll go ahead and do our fold over. this side over here and then we will do our ends and you see I cut that little corner right there a little too sh I think that's the one that I cut a little too wide I don't know if y'all can see that but a piece of my chipboard is showing but Again, those metal book corners that I love will hide that. <laughs> and I did the same thing over here. You know, sometimes no matter how hard I try, I always have that happen. But you know, those little metal book corners are a godsend. <laughs> so once you get your edges folded over, you can get them all smoothed down with your bone folder. And what I am going to do, I'm going to lay an extra piece of tape right here down the middle, just for a little bit of extra support. Just because that's what's gonna be opening and closing the most. get it nice and smooth all right so now for the liner piece we are going to need a piece that is drum roll please put the ruler the right way please we are going to need a piece that is 12 inches by let's do eight and three quarters all right, so I'm gonna get that cut out and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my liner piece cut out to uh, 12 inches by eight and three quarters. Couldn't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> Couldn't remember the measurement. So I've got this all cut out and all I'm gonna do is figure out which side I wanna use because they're both really great, but I kinda like this red side because it kinda goes with the outside so yeah, I will use this side. So all I'm gonna do is take my two inch tape, well first, I'm gonna peel up the backing off of this. And then take my two inch tape and lay it down across here. getting it down into that crevice. So all of the, all these layers of tape were really gonna help strengthen that area and that's really why I didn't put a spine because there's gonna be a lot of tape going across and I didn't want anything to get in the way of it folding. It's already gonna be pretty much, probably a tight fold anyway. So it should be or it is fine without a spine piece. All right. So, got those all laid down. Get those all pressed in there. And lift off your backing. All right. So, we're gonna take a little bit of glue And just go around our edge. And 
making sure to get your corners really good. Don't get too close to your tape. You don't want to get this stuck on your tape just yet, <laughs> which I've done before. All right, so that's enough glue. Don't want to go nuts. All right. And now we will try to get this. Ah! <laughs> See, I almost messed up. <laughs> We're going to try and get this as centered as possible to the best of our abilities. And there we go. Looks good to me. Okay, get everything smoothed out. Get everything now really worked in with our big old spatula. And now work your paper down into the crevice. Find your bend and really work that paper. Now this is gonna be a kind of a tricky part because you wanna work the paper down in there but you wanna kinda of be gentle because you don't wanna tear it. So if you keep bending it and working it down, it will give, and it's kind of like the paper stretches a little bit. So just keep doing this. Keep working it. And it will give. Doesn't seem like it will but it will. Seems like it's gonna be really tight, but it will give. So just keep working it. Also, make sure you don't have any of your paper coming up. If you do, just work that glue in a little bit more and just keep, just keep bending it. Now what you can do, once you have it closed, what I like to do is go along with your bone folder or whatever you're using and really flatten that spine out. Go over those edges because they'll want to stick up. And there you go. So, seams like a lot of work, but it isn't. You just have to be patient. Really work that spine down in there. All that tape and everything like that, it will give and stretch. So will the paper, especially if you lose, as you loosen up those fibers with your bone folder or your spatula or whatever you're using, it will make the paper give. So to where you can fold this over and it will close. And like I said, once you get it to close, just go over it with your bone folder and really flatten it out. And there you go. So now we're going to make our pockets for the inside of our folder. And what I'm gonna do is that extra side piece that I had, I'm gonna turn this into a couple of pockets. And all I'm gonna do is, first you'll want to measure this, which this is six inches, and I'm going to cut my extra piece of paper, which is 12 inches wide, and I'm going to cut it down just to about I would say 
really honestly, this is your personal preference. So this is a total of nine inches tall. So I don't want my pockets going all the way top and bottom. I'll probably have my pockets stop probably around maybe eight inches. So let's see if this is eight inches of what I cut off. And it's a little over. So I'm gonna use this cutter that I got from Creative Memory Keepers. Well, I didn't get it from them. Got it from Amazon. But the brand is Creative Memories. Um, I actually did a review video. Um, it will be linked at the end of this video. And um, it'll be in the description box below. So check that out. Um, I did a review on this and it's a really, really good cutter. I've really enjoyed using it so far. So cut this down. And now all I'm gonna do, this is 12 inches, I'm just gonna cut it in half. So I'm gonna find my six inches. I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna flip this over. I've made this mistake before. <laughs> flip this over. And I'm just gonna put them at an angle you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be at a specific angle. This is your personal preference. There is no right or wrong. This is just how I'm going to cut mine. Just the most important thing is fold it to where the same image, if you're using, you know, fold it to where the image is on the outside on both sides, if that makes any sense. You see how this is on here? And this is like this. If you do it like this, you're gonna cut them and it's, you're gonna have, the, the pockets aren't gonna work. <laughs> you're gonna have one with this pattern and one with this pattern, which if that's what you're going for, great, go for it. I'm not. <laughs> so, go ahead and get these lined up. Sure, that looks good right there. And pockets. I'm going to grab my scoreboard. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch gusset. Because I like for my pockets to be gusseted. You don't have to do this. This is just my personal preference. So I'm just going to do it on two sides. I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut this little corner off where my two scores intersected. I don't think y'all can see that, but if you can, it's just that little corner. And I'm just going to cut that off. And then I'm going to fold this over. It doesn't have to really be super burnished. Um, just a simple fold with your fingers will be fine. And then also I'm going to take this little corner at the top and cut that off. Just because I don't want that little edge showing. And then I will do the same thing to this one and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back and we're going to put our pockets in. So you can use glue or tape for this. I'm going to use my glue just because it's a little bit easier to position them the way I want them because glue will give you that little bit of room. You don't want to go crazy with the glue either. Which this is probably a little much here, but it's okay. That's what fingers are for. <laughs> so, okay. And we will get this stuck down in here. And I'm basically just going to be putting it right to the edge of my inside liner. Top, or I'm sorry, bottom and side. 
and see what I mean? Glue gives you a little bit of that wiggle room so I could adjust it to where I want it. Okay. Get my spatula and get that glue nice and worked in. And you can get your bone folder. Make sure that the glue isn't sticking down to the inside. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for the other side. All right, and we'll place this wherever you want it. And that looks good. And same thing, we're gonna use our big old spatula. Get that glue nice and worked in. Get a napkin, get any seepage cleaned up. All right, and make sure that your inside isn't stuck down. All right, and there you go. You have your inside pockets. And you just wanna be careful, you don't wanna get these little pockets in the fold crevice right here because it'll just add extra bulk to that fold and as you can see I just barely missed it <laughs> so um, but I'm good it just it barely just missed it so it's still fine and there you go so now comes the part where we decorate so I'm going to be putting on my metal book corners and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my glue on these. Just a little bit will do ya. And put one on there. And I'm gonna use my pliers to just squeeze that edge. You don't need to press a whole bunch, just a little squeeze. and the glue will do the rest of the work. So there you go. So I'm gonna do this to all four corners and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back. Um, I figured I would do the last one on camera with y'all. Um, did the first one with y'all. Figured I would do the last one too. So I'll, again, all you're gonna do, is put some glue Get your corner pressed on, just use some pliers and gently give it a little smash <laughs> and soak up any glue that might have seeped out the edges. There we go. And now we are going to put our, actually before we do this, we're gonna go ahead and put our little pieces of ephemera. So I think I will put this one out here. And I'm just using a little bit of glue because these are just paper. Now if you have a sticker maker this would be perfect to use your sticker maker for like a Xyron machine or whatever other brand there is. I have one but I don't feel like getting it out so <laughs> I'm just using glue because it's here. So I will put this here. There's no right or wrong with this. It's all personal preference. I've made some where I don't put any of the anything on there. So this will be one of the first ones that I actually put something on the outside and on the inside. 
And I think I'll put this one on there too. And mm, I don't want to go overboard, so I think that's good. And on the inside, I think I'm going to take this. This is airmail, kind of like, I don't know what that is, but it's like an airmail thing. Kind of looks like a ticket. And I think I'm going to tuck this kind of like it's sticking out of one of these little pockets. Don't want to get that in the fold. We also don't want the glue to stick to our pocket either. So, just be careful about that if you're going to glue stuff to, down to the inside like I did. Make sure to don't make sure to don't make sure you don't <laughs> glue your pocket closed that would be terrible after all the work you've done and you glue your pocket closed all right and i think i'm going to take this one and glue it right here on the pocket itself that'll be cool I have to refill my glue bottle. And with this, there's no right or wrong. It's all personal preference. You don't have to do any decorating. You can do more, you can do less. It's all up to you. And I think I'll do this one too. And this one I'm just going to put right down here. Straight. That way it looks like a label for it. There we go. I think that looks neat. All right, so now, I'll put those away later. Now we're going to adhere our clip. Right about there. Now yeah, that looks good. Okay. I'm gonna use E6000 for this because I want it to be nice and sturdy. And get a good glob of it on there. Okay. And we'll just put that right there. Get it as centered as we can. And there we go. All right, now E6000, I'm sure you all know, needs some time to set up, at least a good 20 or 30 minutes to dry, and then a full 24 hours to completely cure. All right, guys. So I had to uh, wait for the E6000 to set up before I could um, put the notepad in and everything like that. Um, so I wasn't able to completely show you the finished product just yet. So it has been about 24 hours, so the E6000 is nice and set up. So um, just wanted to show you the finished product with the notepad and everything. So um, I'm using my phone, so sorry if it's a little shaky. Um, the battery ran out on my camera and I can't find the charging cord right now. So <laughs> it's one of those mornings already. So anyway, this is a finished product. Um, the 
clip is nice and sturdy now with the E6000 now that it's completely dried. And I just put one of these notepads um, that you can get a pack of three from the Dollar Tree. But they sell these little 50-page notepads everywhere. Um, I've seen them at the grocery store in a pack of three. I've seen them at the Dollar Tree. I've seen them at um, Walmart. Uh, almost everywhere. So um, wherever you can find a little notepad or if you want to cut down your own paper, um, you can certainly do that too. And then we flip it open and we have our beautiful inside with our pockets. So when we're done writing our notes down on our front, we can just take that piece of paper and save it and stick it in one of our pockets and fold it back up and get ready to jot down some more notes. So there you go. That is a finished product. And uh, this will be for sale in my Etsy shop. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any kind of comments you would like. And um, yeah. That's it. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.